The latter develops total body rhythm, coordination, and quickness by implementing hundreds of different foot patterns. As you implement the teachings from this video into your training routine, you should strive to follow three basic rules. First, master the basic drills in each category before progressing to the more difficult drills. Second, as you perform each repetition, view the ladder in thirds and switch gears with each third. This means going slow enough in the first third to create a perfect rhythm and motion. In the second third, you should accelerate the perfect motion from the first. The final third is where you aim to reach top speed. Your goal is to never mess up and hit the ladder, but if it's going to happen, it should happen in the final third where you're really trying to step on the gas. Finally, as you move through the ladder, listen to your feet. Because each drill has its own unique pattern, it also has its own unique sound and beat. Concentrate on this sound and making it gradually increase in tempo. By following these three basic rules, you will ensure that you get the most out of your ladder training. On this first drill, the athlete alternately places one foot in each hole and concentrates on maintaining an upright posture. It is essential that the athlete learn to keep the backward snap of the elbow in sync with the feet. As the right elbow drives back, the right knee drives forward and vice versa. Like with all drills on this video, only the front portion of the athlete's foot strikes the ground. Two foot runs is performed exactly the same way as one foot runs, except that both feet must now land in each square. Motions here are shorter and faster than those used in one foot runs. Be sure to perform equal repetitions leading with your right and left foot. The most basic lateral motion drill is a lateral run. In this drill, both feet land in each square before moving on to the next square. It is of utmost importance that an athlete keep their shoulders in a position parallel with the sides of the ladder. By maintaining this position, the athlete is capable of reversing their movement from left to right. Athletes that begin to open their shoulders towards the direction they are moving leave themselves vulnerable to a cutback by the offensive player. As with all lateral drills, make sure you give equal attention to performing reps both to your left and right. The cross-country skier drill requires lateral balance and nimble feet. For this drill, the athlete begins with the lead foot in the first square and the trail foot directly behind and outside the first square. The feet quickly switch places and then the athlete moves to the second hole and repeats. As with all lateral drills, the athlete should aim to keep his shoulders locked in a position parallel with the sides of the ladder. This version of hopscotch, the athlete starts with both feet inside the first hole and then hops forward and lands with a foot on either side of the second hole. This pattern is repeated through the entire length of the ladder. The athlete should concentrate on maintaining a low center of gravity, especially as the speed of the hops increase. Straddle hops place the athlete in a low, wide base defensive position. The athlete should pretend he has a board between his ankles that keeps the feet locked in approximately two feet or more of separation. Contacts with the ground should be light, quick, and only involve the ball of the foot. As with all drills in this section, the athlete should spend as little time as possible on the ground in between each hop. Jump cuts are great for any athlete that competes in a sport that requires the ability to cut on a dime. The athlete's feet are kept together and alternately hop in and out of the ladder. The knees should be bent to absorb shock, and a slightly crouched position should be maintained at all times. The Crazy Climber drill helps athletes develop a quick rebound off the ground and also enhances hip flexibility and rhythm. An athlete performing the Crazy Climber should keep his feet locked in approximately an 18-inch separation. When hopping, both feet should hit the ground at the same time, and the hips should be on a constant swivel. Notice that the athlete always pivots off the foot on the inside of the ladder, and that the athlete's upper body generally remains pointed towards the end of the ladder. When performing the buzz saw, the athlete begins in a lateral position behind the first hole of the ladder. The athlete then steps into the first hole with the lead foot, and then into the hole with the trail foot. The athlete then exits the hole by stepping out with the lead foot, and then stepping out with the trail foot. The athlete should enter and exit each hole of the ladder with both feet before moving on to the next hole. 
This one is called a linear trail whip. Linear because the athlete is moving forward and trail because the whip leg is behind the athlete. Here the athlete moves in a linear path and keeps the lead leg inside the ladder and hits every hole. The trail leg stays outside the ladder and alternately whips from side to side behind the athlete's body. The athlete's shoulder should stay aimed towards the end of the ladder throughout the repetition and only the hips should rotate. This exercise requires a lot of rhythm and hip flexibility. The icky shuffle is one of the best drills that can be performed on the ladder. The foot pattern used in this drill involves stepping into each hole with both feet and then stepping to either side of the ladder with only one foot. Because this is such an important drill, we encourage athletes to take this one slow and really master it before moving on. Once the athlete masters the basic pattern of this drill, lightning speed can be achieved by concentrating on speeding up the sound of the feet.